Hello and a very good afternoon, lovely audience. Thank you for joining in. We welcome you to today's webinar on South Korea. Hope you're all doing good and staying safe indoors. Let me begin by introducing myself and our presenter for today. My name is Nikita Raptani, and I'm your moderator for today's training session. This training will be for approximately an hour and it will be delivered by Sandeep Dutta, Marketing Manager, Korea Tourism Organization. So before the training starts, let me start a few guidelines. We recommend you use a headphone for better voice clarity. Also keep a pen and paper handy to make notes while the webinar is on. As far as any doubts and questions that come in your mind, while the training is on, please feel free to type it in the Q&A box, which is on the left-hand side of your screen, and we will take it up after the presentation. This presentation will appear at the center of your screen. So do you see the first uh, of the three buttons on the top right-hand corner of your screen? The button has four arrows pointing north, south, east, west. That is the button. If you click on that one, you will be able to watch the presentation in full screen. Also, please note that if you have any network issues at your end, which is basically happening nowadays, the presentation may freeze or buffer. If that happens, please refresh your screen by pressing F5 and it will be back. Due to heavy usage of internet and as we are all at home, we do foresee some of them facing these challenges. So please bear with us if this happens and F5 will be a savior. Now I will explain about the icons which appear at the bottom of your page. Let me start from the extreme right. The dark green icon is for survey. Next to it, the yellow icon is for certificate and the light green icon is for quiz. Make sure you attend the training from start to end, then take the quiz and then fill in the survey form. You will receive your certificate after successful completion of the quiz. So good luck and happy learning. I will now pass it to Sandeep to take over from here. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for the lovely introduction, Nikita. Uh, I hope everyone watching today is uh, keeping safe and staying at home. Uh, we all are trying to you know, maximize our uh, uh, time here in order to get valuable insights. And what better way to you know, uh, learn more about South Korea than attending this webinar today. What I will be doing is uh, going through a detailed presentation which will give you an overview of the destination, talk about its USPs and how you can build a product uh, as and when the, uh, you know, the tourism is up and running for your clientele in the future. I will now trans uh, share my screen so that you can watch the presentation. So now you have the presentation in front of you. We will start. We will start by uh, going through some general information about the South Korea, uh, followed by some transportation and airport connections. Then uh, talk about the very frequently asked questions regarding visa, currency, and other information that your question, you will have or your client will have. Uh, finally, we'll look at uh, the destinations uh, with the main destination and the secondary destinations and how they gel together. Uh, I will also uh, give you a, a little bit of information on the websites and different kind of uh, you know, utility websites that we have. And in the end, we will also talk about the MICE part of the business and how as a tourism board, our office can able to help you with the MICE product and what kind of incentive and what kind of support we offer whenever there is a MICE group going to South Korea. So I hope all of you are uh, ready for now. Let's get started with the South Korea destination training. Starting with the general information. Uh, first of all, where is South Korea located? South Korea is located somewhere sandwiched between East in the Eastern part of the world between Japan and China. Just like India, South Korea is also a peninsula with three sides of water and one side of land. However, things are a little bit different when you compare it to India. The northern part of the North uh, Korean Peninsula is a country called North Korea, which has blocked access with uh, no direct connections to travel from North to the South 
uh, in that case, there is no way that you can travel by surface to South Korea. So the only way you can travel to South Korea is by a flight or by a ferry or a ship or a cruise. Ships and cruises don't apply from India. It's too far because it is a long haul journey. So flight is the only connection. Technically, you can consider South Korea like an island with a flight being the only connection to arrive there. To put it into perspective, South Korea is not a very big country. It is roughly the size of Madhya Pradesh. It is just, it is almost 33 times smaller than India. So covering the length and breadth of South Korea is not very difficult. If you have a couple of days in hand or about seven, a week or uh, a few more days than a week, then you can come, come uh, you know, visit the entire length and breadth of the country and look at the main sites. And uh, as I go ahead in the presentation, you will know how it is possible. First of all, we talk about the climatic conditions of South Korea. So South Korea has all the four climates, just like India, and they are clearly distinguishable from each other. So that is an advantage for the country and for the destination. However, the timings are a little bit different when it comes to uh, Korean weather and Indian weather. As you can see from the slide or from the presentation, the spring starts from March and goes all the way to May. The temperature is around 10 to 15 degrees. It is absolutely pleasant, it is cool, it is bright sunshine, no rain. This is followed by summer, which is from June to August. Little, little bit delay, if, delayed if you compare to the summers in India. However, the best part about Korean summer is that Korean summer average temperature is around 27 degrees, which is less than 30 degrees. So even during the summer time, the temperatures stay below 30 degrees, which is a pleasant temperature for an Indian customer. Then we come to autumn, which is September to November. Again, uh, very pleasant weather, uh, just like spring, uh, 10 to 15 degrees, and which is followed by winter in the three months, which is December, January, and February. The winters is very cold. Mostly it is snowing. The temperatures can be sub-zero. Average temperatures are around minus six to minus seven degrees. So unless you, know, you or your customer is specifically looking for a winter experience, we recommend spring, summer, and autumn for South Korea for travel. So from March to all the way to November end is a good time to travel to South Korea. There are few cultural aspects about South Korea which are very, very inherent to the country and are deeply embedded in their society. And there is a good way to experience them when you are visiting South Korea also. The first of them is Hanok or the Korean traditional house. These are houses made of traditional uh, structures, wood, and they have central heating system, or it's called ondol. It's a, a floor heating system, which is which was used during the winter seasons. And these kind of houses are preserved all over the country, and you can also try to stay in them, in Seoul and other places. They are not very expensive; cost around 40, uh, 40 50 dollars per night to stay. So it's not a very expensive product but definitely something exciting and something unique for somebody who wants to really uh, understand the culture, traditional history and culture of South Korea. Next is a Korean traditional costume, which is called Hanbok. This is a three piece costume, which is comprised of a shirt, jacket and a skirt or a pant, depending upon female or male. Now the cultural, uh, aspect of this uh, Korean dress can be definitely felt by every tourist because the Korean traditional dress can be rented at, at, at all of the major uh, tourist places. One of the ways that the country or the government is promoting uh, the Korean traditional dress is if you as a customer wear the Korean traditional costume, in that case, you don't have to pay for the monument entrance fee when you're visiting a palace or any of the heritage sites. Now, what happens is that this helps you increase the experience of the customer. The same money that you would spend on the monument entrance fee, you can just use for the rental of the costume, which is the costume shops are just located outside the main tourist complex. And your customer can wear uh, the traditional costume, go inside, do the sightseeing, you know, get a double experience at almost the same cost. So definitely something which is worth enough to keep in mind. Lastly, we come to the Korean food, or uh, the Korean traditional food, which is called Hansik. Now, Korean traditional food comprises of three basic elements, which is rice, meat, and vegetable, which is com 
and a, and a nationwide side dish called kimchi, a fermented cabbage uh, spicy dish. Now this is the combination which is distinct, has, has its own distinct flavor. It is distinct and different from the other Asian food like Japanese or Chinese or South Asian. And they're more spicy and more fried and definitely more palatable to the Indian audience and Indian taste. So some of the Korean foods are definitely worth trying for any Indian who's traveling to South Korea. However, for all of us in India, the, one of the main things when we travel abroad or one of the main things for our customer when they travel abroad is the availability of Indian food. Now that is something that is completely taken care of and completely sorted in, in, in South Korea. As you can see from the slide, there are more than 100 Indian friendly restaurants all over the country. These can be Indian restaurants run by Indian people or there are Indian friendly restaurants which serve food without pork and beef. Or there are halal restaurants which have Muslim friendly food, food uh, without the pork. Or there are vegetarian and vegan restaurants. All of them put together are a, more, a list more than 100. They are located at all the major tourist cities that your guest will be visiting. And to help you with all of this, we have compiled all the data together and made a guidebook called Indian Friendly Restaurants in Korea. Now, if you want, you can contact us. We can send you this guidebook or physical copy, as many quantities you want. Or you can visit the website mentioned below, visit korea.in, and download the PDF version. This is very helpful when you're planning an itinerary or if you are sending your final docket to the client uh, with tickets and everything, you can attach this PDF also so that they can refer to it when they're traveling in South Korea. And it gives you a sense of confidence from the country uh, regarding the food availability situation. The restaurants, uh, the guidebook is very, very detailed. It has all the restaurant names, their locations, uh, what are the seating capacity? What is the main food? What is the price range? And even to the capacity, even to the details of whether there is enough par parking facility available for bus or not. All that is mentioned in this guidebook. Now, before we go to the destinations and move further into the presentation, a little bit on a small uh, study that was done by our uh, head office recently. They wanted to understand what is the main reason and who are the people who visit South Korea. Now, as you can see from the results of this research, you can see most of the people travel South Korea for vacation, recreation, and leisure, and they're traveling with their friends and family and relative. And the main thing that they do there is shopping. Now, if you combine vacation, family, and shopping, if you combine all of the three things together, you're essentially looking at an Indian traveler. So I confidently can tell you that by the end of this presentation, you will realize that South Korea is a destination which is appropriate and it is perfect for any typical Indian traveler looking and in search of a new destination. Now let's look at the ways that you can give, uh, enter the country. Uh, as I said before, it is not a very big country, uh, roughly the size of Madhya Pradesh. However, it is a very developed country. And e even being such a small country, it has almost 15 airports all over the country. And eight of them are international airports. Imagine a country as, as small as that having so many airports. That's how well connected the country is. However, you don't need all the, uh, you don't need to know all the rest, uh, you know, uh, airports. There are three major points of connection that are very important from an Indian point of view. First is Incheon International Airport, which is located on the top left near the in uh, Seoul city. This is the main international airport where all 90% of the flight connections take place from India. The second bigger one is the Gimhae or Busan Airport located in the southwest part of the country. This is located outside the Busan city. Busan is a very uh, important city when it comes to Indian traveler, you will understand as we go forward. And going to Busan, Gimhae becomes a very, very good connection. Lastly is Jeju International Airport. This airport is located in Jeju Island, which is an autonomous island located south of the mainland of Korea. And this has its own USP, it has its own charm. And when I reach Jeju in the presentation, I will explain more in detail. The main thing is that it's got its own international flights so that you can go directly to Jeju without touching the mainland if you want. 
South Korea is also very strategically located uh, in the global scene of things. If you want to connect to different parts of the world and you want to choose a Korean airline like an Ashana airline or a Korean air, then you can also you can you know connect to 59 countries and 188 cities. It is a very good point of connection if you are traveling or if you have guests who are traveling to especially west coast of USA and Canada like Vancouver, Seattle, Los Angeles, San Francisco. Very good connections. Talking about flights, let's look at the direct flight connections and the direct wire flight connections we have from India. I, as you can see from the presentation, the direct flights are from Delhi and Bombay, Mumbai. The uh, Korean Air and Air India flies directly from Delhi. Uh, Korean Air is a daily flight. Air India is four times a week. And Mumbai, Korean Air flies three times a week. These flights are of around seven hours duration in flying time. Now, if you have customers apart from Delhi and Mumbai in any other part of India, then also you don't have to worry about because South Korea has excellent flight connections, one-stop flight connections from all the metro cities in India. So as you can see that Cathay Pacific, Singapore Airlines, Malaysian Airlines, Thai Airways, a lot of flights from China are very well connected to South Korea. They have multiple flights per day to South Korea. So if you have any client who's, uh, who can connect from any of the metro cities, then one-stop via flight connections can take you to South Korea within a flight flying range of about 10 hours to 12 hours. So 10 to 12 hours is the maximum time that you would take to reach South Korea for a via flight with the stoppage in between. And uh, a direct flight is around seven hours. So definitely a long haul journey, but not extremely long also. Now, if you're using South Korea or Incheon Airport as a transit to go onward destinations to like Japan or USA or Canada, or uh, as, a fact, as a matter of fact, to, US, uh, to Australia and New Zealand also, then you have the choice of using the free transit tour facility during the layover time at the Incheon Airport. Now, these transit tours are completely free of cost and they do not require any kind of transit visa. You can book them online at the Incheon Airport for your guest, or they can go to the web. Or when they are at the airport, they can go to the counter and directly avail the services. All that they need is their passport and their onboard boarding pass. Uh, as I said, they are completely free of cost. They are fully guided, English-speaking guided uh, tours by bus. They are the tours are of different durations. So depending upon how much layover time they have, they can choose from entertainment to cave to palace to market to beach, different kind of experiences are available. So definitely something to keep in mind while uh, you know giving a via flight connections using a Korean Air or Ashina Airline. South Korea is very well connected internally through surface also. Uh, rail connections connect all parts of the country from north to south to east to west. The country has a high speed bullet train service, which is the, called the KTX, with an average running speed of around 300 kilometers per hour. It, there are uh, KTX bullet trains from Seoul every 15 minutes. So, you know, timing is never an issue. The longest route is from Seoul to Busan, which is around 500 kilometers and takes about three hours with five scheduled stops. Uh, so this is one of the frequented routes that is uh, used by Indian travelers, especially when you're trying to combine Seoul and Busan twin city itinerary. Uh, bullet trains are popular, definitely much more reasonably priced than you know its neighboring countries like Japan and China, and a worthwhile experience. Now let's get to some of the main points uh, when it comes to the travel basics. So one of the main questions is uh, regarding the visa. Yes, as an Indian uh, traveler, you require a visa to visit South Korea. Uh, for a first time traveler, you will get a single entry visa, which is valid up to 90 days from the date of issue. So whenever you issue, whenever you or your guest will apply for their visa, from the date of issue, it is valid for 90 days within which the client can travel. The fee is not expensive, it's nominal, about 2,800 rupees or 30 US dollars. Of course, if you apply through the VFS, then VFS will have its own charges. It takes minimum four working days to get the visa, but we always take, tell you that keep at least a week in advance, uh, weeks, uh, not, uh, you know, week in hand to get uh, to avoid any hassles. 
the visa can be applied in uh, delhi or kolkata or chennai or mumbai and the documentation is very simple so all you need for south korea visa is an application form two photographs and one year of itr or income tax return in in case your income tax return is not available then a six months bank statement is perfect now if it is a family traveling and if there is a wife and spouse or children traveling then dependents don't need to show their uh, financial documents the person who is sponsoring the travel or the head of the family can uh, you know uh, show their financial documents and all other visas can be applied under dependent category so jeju island in south korea is an autonomous uh, region which has its own uh, you know uh, custom facility uh one of the unique things that they have is they have a visa free facility inside of jeju island this can be availed only if you as a cu customer is flying directly to jeju island and not touching the mainland now if you do that uh you know uh, and you're traveling without for tourism purpose then you can enter the country for up to 30 days without any visa the best connection that is possible for a indian guest to do this is to use uh Cathay Pacific flight via Hong Kong. So Hong Kong Jeju is very well connected with direct flights, and if you use Hong Kong Cathay Pacific, then Hong Kong and Jeju can be combined as a single product, and you can exclude the mainland Korea and do a product. This is a very popular way to, uh, you know, sell an add-on destination to Hong Kong also. Korean currency is uh, Korean won, which is not uh, directly interchangeable to, uh, to Indian rupee in India. You cannot buy Korean won in India. So the best way is to carry US dollars or to carry plastic money like a debit card or a US uh, or a credit card or a uh, or a any or a traveler card. Uh, you can change Indian rupee into Korean won at the airport in Korea and at specific other places, but it is not very common. so us dollar becomes a very reliable source of currency to carry when you are traveling to south korea a small thing nevertheless uh, something important in my opinion is that in south korea they have the same pluck points that we have in india so if you arrive or your guest arrive in korea with a dead battery on your cell phone or a laptop that you immediately need to channel uh, uh, you know charge and you forgot your travel adapter then you're not in a hard place you can easily plug in wherever you want and get your uh, you know charging done so small thing but uh, your i'm sure your customer will be happy when you go to the details and telling the small things when they travel to south korea now we finally look at the uh, main destinations so what we have done is that we have divided the destinations in south korea into two parts of course we don't expect uh, as a first time traveler for somebody to go to every region on the of the country so the main destinations which is seoul busan jeju gyeonggi incheon have almost everything to offer to a customer when they are visiting south korea for the first or the second time and when they want to get a feel of the country or know the country or experience its usps and have a good time however you will always have uh, in your clientele that one specific customer or that particular client who is very well traveled who is very knowledgeable and they want to do different kind of things and they go want to do a different itinerary from everybody else for them we have the secondary destinations uh and they have their own usps which i will go through briefly and they can be very easily combined with the main places to make a different or a unique itinerary for them okay so we will start with the destinations now so we start with seoul city so if you can see from the map seoul uh, is located on the top left side top uh, uh, con top left corner of the country uh, it is the most vibrant city it is the capital city of the country it is the hub of maximum tourism of south korea it is where you have the main palaces the nightlife the entertainment the theaters the pubs uh, the river cruise and all the major attractions of the country are located here so visiting seoul in itself is a destination or a journey of you know two nights three nights is definitely not enough about four to five nights is required if you want to really understand and experience all the sides of seoul city one of the best ways to you know probably experience the destination and to get to know the seoul city is to take the city tour bus 
As you can see, there are many courses or different, different routes available. The downtown tour with the palaces or the Gangnam course, which is the main uh, or the most highly developed part of Korea or uh, so to say the, uh, the Manhattan of Seoul, uh, Seoul City with all the skyscrapers and the head office and the tall buildings and the nightclubs. Or if you want to do a panorama course, which gives you the glimpse of the country or the city and overview. And one of the most popular ones is the night course. Uh, you know, especially because flights from India usually come during the daytime, then, you know, checking out, coming out of the airport, going to the hotel. Uh, the guest is already a little bit tired. They want to take a rest and they're free by the, they're relaxed by the evening time. You know, usually by the evening time, usually the sightseeing tours are all finished. Uh, but if you want to still give them like a small tour, then the night tour comes into very handy. You know, it starts around 7.30 and finishes around in two hours. You can have a pre-dinner or a post-dinner combined with a night tour to give them something useful on the first day. Seoul has a lot of attractions. As you can see from the, web, uh, from the slide, there are markets, there are palaces, there are towers. There are city wall or you know areas which are bustling with tourism. Number three or the center top photo, Gyeongbuk Palace is the central or the most famous palace of South Korea. It is a huge complex. It takes a couple of hours to see the length and breadth. Uh, guard changing ceremony takes place here every time, two times a day. So that is something interesting to see. The Lotte World Tower number four is the tallest tower in South Korea. It is the fifth tallest building in the world. The top floor has a glass bottom observatory, uh, which can be, uh, you know, accessed and, uh, you know, you can walk on the observatory and see 550 floor meters below the floor or the surface. It is a thrilling experience in itself. The city wall with the heritage and the marketplace, a lot of things to see in Seoul City. A very important point uh, when it comes to Seoul is the nightlife aspect especially when it comes to a mice traveler. So, uh, so the nightlife in Seoul can be described in three terms. One is the, you know, the nightclubs, the bars, the pubs. So if you want to have a good time or your customer wants to go to a party or have a dance or experience a nightlife, then there are pubs and bars all over the city and the, you know, the, the places stay alive till 1 a.m., 2 a.m. and over the weekends up to, over, up to almost till 4 a.m. in the morning. Uh, so that is one way or somebody who or the family traveler they can do night cruise ships they can go to Jimdilbang, which is like a korean sauna which are open 24 hours a day uh, you can experience korean traditional bath or take a sauna bath at any point that they're not expensive at all and there is norebang which is one of the most commonly uh, common and popular play uh, way of you know experiencing nightlife uh, in south korea it's a very popular concept there it is essentially like a karaoke bar so it is there are dedicated private rooms where you have unlimited supply of food you know booze alcohol and you have karaoke machine and you have almost all the songs in the world that you can think of so you can dance and party in your own privacy and have a good time people who are looking for adult nightlife especially from the mice sector uh, you know there are different dedicated places in the city where you can find an uh, adult nightlife that is also available. South Korea is more like a Singapore or a Macau or, or a Hong Kong when it comes to nightlife and it is not like a Thailand. So you have to keep that in mind and you have to completely make your cl client understand that properly. Korea is also a premium destination. It is an expensive destination. So prices for nightclubs, entertainment and nightlife experiences can be much higher than somebody is probably used to in South Asia. So something to keep in mind. A small experience, nevertheless, nevertheless something uh, worthwhile, especially for family travel or student travel, is the K-Style Hub. This is a special experience center located right at the center of the Seoul city near the palaces, where somebody can experience Korean culture, lifestyle, uh, get, a, get, a, you know, get a body treatment done, wear Korean traditional clothes and take a photo, try Korean food and, you know, also buy souvenirs and all this experience is completely free of cost. This is a very useful kind of an experience, especially when it is a student travel group. Uh, your DMC can book a slot where you can get guided tour 
or if you have a FID travel, they can just walk in. Everything is free, of course. They can experience the product and the different kind of varieties and get to know more about the country. Of course, uh, souvenirs and trying food will definitely have its own charges. Being a very, very old city, almost three to 4,000 years of history, they have a lot of UNESCO World Heritage Sites, being at City Wall, Palace, Royal Tombs, Jongmyo Shrine. So all this is all available in the midst of the skyscrapers. So it gives you a very good blend of modern and ancient. A few more hotspots like the Seoul Tower, Doksigung Palace, um, the bottom center photo, Coex and SM Town is something which is very popular for somebody who is into K-pop and Korean music and K-drama. Uh, Korean music and uh, Korean drama is you know, getting very, very popular all over the world these days. And if you have a customer or somebody who is really into, then they can def definitely visit the SM Town where they can see Korean, uh, you, know, you know, experience Korean popular music, uh, watch hologram shows of their favorite uh, K-pop actors and celebrities and take photos with them. So definitely, definitely a thrilling kind of an experience. Being the capital city, it also hosts a lot of festivals. Right now, as we speak, the spring festival is going on. The spring season is in full bloom. It is definitely an unfortunate time that people are not able to travel. However, you know, in the future, if somebody wants to experience spring, then South Korea is definitely offers you one of the beautiful sites with spring flowers and full bloom. Summers have its own festival. One of the festivals which is not to be missed is uh, Seoul Lantern Festival. It happens in the winter time, in uh, somewhere in the middle of November. Uh, you know, it is the end of season from Indian tourism point of view to Korea. But uh, if somebody is visiting uh, Seoul city in November, mid-November, then the Lantern Festival is something that is not to be missed. There's a central stream, stream that flows through the downtown of the city. The entire stream has different kind of shapes and, memory, and architectural stuff, which are uh, all lanterns and they're light, lit up brightly in the night. And it is a beautiful sight to see. Shopping. Now, this is one of the most important things for an Indian customer. Uh, South Korea has abundance of shopping when it comes to, you know, especially cosmetics. Cosmetics in South Korea is getting popularity all over the world. A lot of Korean bands have come into India, which are getting a lot of traction. From the photograph, you can see the left photo, left side photo is Dongdaemun Shopping Complex. This is a big area with about 10 to 12 shopping mall and shopping town, uh, outdoor, indoor shopping area. And the best part is that this whole place is open 24 hours a day. So you can have 24 hour shopping experience. No matter what time you go there, there are shops and places, restaurants open for people to enjoy. The photograph on the right, the Namdamun market is something like a Kofford market in Mumbai or a Sarojini Nagar in Delhi, you know, selling whole, wholesale items and you know, souvenirs at a very, very cheap price. But not only that, South Korea, all over the place, all over the cities, all over the uh, all places have departmental stores, hyper chain markets and convenience stores where you can do your shoppings also. One of the best things about South Korea is that they've got their duty free shops right in the cities. Uh, so you don't have to wait to go to the airport uh, at the end of your tour to do your duty free shopping. You can do them while in the middle of your tour at the cities at their own convenience also. So that brings me to the end of Seoul. Let's look at Busan now. Now, if you can see from the map, you can see Busan is on the top uh, bottom left side of the country. It is the coastal country, city. I personally like to compare Busan very much with uh, Mumbai. So, so Mumbai, just like Mumbai, Busan is a coastal city with ocean on one side and is a skyscraper city with uh, with beaches with nightlife with entertainment you know buddhist temples a lot of attractions and a definitely a city not to be missed if somebody wants to come you know enjoy the beaches of south korea again one of the best ways to see the city is taking the city tour bus there are different buses like jumbo bus which are open top or uh, you know regular city tour buses if you are a group then your DMC can arrange coaches which can do these tours on their own also. 
Busan is a not a very very big city as compared to Seoul. So one full day sightseeing or two or half day sightseeing is sufficient enough to see the main sites, uh, which include the the most popular beach of South Korea, which is Hyundai Beach. If you can see the top uh, top left photo on the on the screen, this huge beach is located in the you know in the downtown side of the of the city. Uh, is lined with hotels, restaurants, bar all over the place. And if you're going to in the summer, especially, then the place is absolutely filled with a lot of local people and uh, you know foreign tourists also. So you know summers can be really busy, but you know other times you can definitely find enough space to have a relaxing beer or you know go to a restaurant with a view or you know just spend time with your family. So that is definitely possible. The Gwangali Beach, one of the important architectural sites. The Taejongde Park, the center bottom photo on this slide, is one of the key locations for a lot of new movies that are shot in South Korea, and it is also a very beautiful cliff site overlooking the ocean. The Gukje and Jagalchi Market are important places or big shopping places. Jagalchi Market is one of the largest fish markets uh, in the world. It is the third largest fish market. The first largest one is in Japan. Second one is in uh, in Europe, in, in the, one of the Scandinavian countries. And the third largest one is in South Korea. If you do an early morning Jagalchi tour, then you can see all the boats and the ships coming in, bringing all the seafood, different kind of varieties available. If you're a non-vegetarian, if you're a seafood lover, then you can definitely try a lot of variety of, you know, uh, products that are usually not available in India here. The Bomiosa Temple, which is on the photo on the top right, is one of the most, uh, one of the uh, oldest temples, oldest Asian temples, uh, oldest Buddhist temples in Eastern Asia. Uh, definitely a you know worthwhile site to see. Now Busan is also very very uh, important for. Uh, one more reason, which is basically industry tours. As you can see from the uh, slide, there is a city called Ulsan, which is located one hour from Busan city. Now, this is the hub of all the manufacturing that takes place in South Korea. So the Hyundai Motor Plant, which is the largest car manufacturing facility in the world, producing millions of cars a year, the Hyundai Heavy Industries, shipbuilding factory, or dockyard, or the port, these kind of factories all are available in this place and a lot of Indian customers visit a lot of places here to do site inspections, to do factory visits and to do some kind of benchmarking tours. So if you have clientele like association or government groups or you know MBA uh, students or university or school students or school groups or architectural groups or any kind of group which wants to do some kind of industry visit visit a Hyundai factory or a LG factory or a Samsung factory or look at the manufacturing process or the large scale processes that Korea has and how successfully they run them, then this place is our top most recommended place. Uh, being very close to Busan, a night stay in Ulsan is not compulsory. You can stay in Busan, do a full day excursion to Ulsan and see the main sites. Your DMC can get the permissions and all the uh, sites visits can be arranged. If the site visit is too technical where you want to do some, some kind of MOU or meeting with the industry, then as KTO, we can help you set up those uh, meetings and we can set up those uh, visits. We can help you with that. So definitely uh, something that is definitely worth considering and South Korea being a hub of manufacturing you know, Samsung, LG, Hyundai. Now there's one of the big brands, Kia, which is making huge waves in India. These are all Korean brands and they are very famous all over the world. And it is definitely worth going there and seeing how they manufacture and what are the facilities that, uh, you know, make these process possible all over the world. Next, we look at Jeju Island. Uh, if you again look at the map, then the the brown island located south of the mainland Korea is Jeju Island. This is an autonomous island with its own guidelines and visa facility. Uh, this is not a very small island. To give you a fair comparison, this is almost twice the size of Singapore. 
So it's a very big island, about 80 by 80 kilometers by 40 kilometers. It's uh, an island which has got a volcano in its center. The volcano is a dormant one, so it's, there is nothing to be worried about. But it offers a plenty of natural beauty and you know, you know, unique world heritage and you, uh, you know, uh, unique natural attractions which are not to be seen or found at other places in the world. As I mentioned earlier, uh, Jeju has its own international flight, very well connected to the nearby places, but very good connections when it comes to India is Hong Kong. So Cathay Pacific can take you directly to Jeju Island. If you want to combine Jeju with the mainland of Korea, then you definitely need the visa. But if you only want to visit Jeju, then you can just take a Cathay Pacific flight and a three to four night itinerary of Jeju is very much possible. The flight fare on a Cathay Pacific fare to Hong Kong, just three to 4,000 rupees extra, you can add uh, you know, the Jeju sector. So it is not a very ex expensive connection to add on. And definitely something unique for your customer to be offered. As you can see from the photographs, Jeju attractions are mostly about natural beauty. There is the second photograph from the top, which is Sonsang Ilchulbong Peak. This is like a mini volcano located on the eastern coast of the island. It has, uh, you know, it is one of the small volcanoes which you can actually climb on top and take a photo. Uh, not a lot of places in the world or, and there is no place in India where you can actually climb a volcano and take a photo on top. That is definitely something that you can definitely sell as an USP. It is about 500, five, sorry, 500 steps walking to the top of the volcano. Unfortunately, there is no cable car experience here. So uh, if your client can climb 500 steps, which takes about 35 to 40 minutes, then it is definitely a worthwhile uh, site. Otherwise, a photo stop here is also equally beautiful. The Hyobje Beach is one of the most beautiful beaches in South Korea. Crystal clear water and white sand and shallow water. You can go half a mile into the water and still the water will reach your neck or, your, or to your chest level. So you can really enjoy. Sobji Koji is one of the beautiful cliffside scenic points. There are a lot of waterfalls, estuary, and other kind of natural beauty attractions in all over the island located. Now, natural attractions are not the only thing. There are different kind of other museums and attractions also. There's a tea museum, there's a teddy bear museum, there is, you know, there is a forest, there is a traditional markets. Uh, one of the most important sites in Seoul, uh, in Jeju is the center bottom photo, Song of Folk Village. This village has preserved the life of Jeju hundreds of years ago, and you can go and experience what was the life like, what is the, you know, what kind of houses people used to stay, what are the different kind of food that they used to try, and what are the customs. So it's definitely worth spending a couple of hours there. There is also a Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum for amazing things. There is a Loveland Museum, which is like a outdoor erotic home theme park. It's unique to its kind. There is not another theme park like that all over the world. So definitely something which is unique for, you know, mice travelers or honeymoon travelers uh, that is worth keeping in mind. Again, as you can see from the photographs, Jeju is mostly about natural beauty. It blends very well as a contrasting destination with Seoul or Busan because Seoul Busan has a lot of modern, uh, you know, modern stuff like skyscrapers, modern technology, you know, uh, futuristic kind of cities, highly developed cities, uh, of course, with its own charm and its own beauty. But when you combine it with Jeju Island, then it becomes like a completely contrasting experience, natural beauty, no sound, peacefulness, green, and, you know, volcanic places, definitely, definitely, you know, a unique blend. One of the very famous attractions in Jeju Island is the Udo submarine tour. This is located in the southern part of the island and it is one of the deepest tourist submarines in the world. It goes all the way to the bedrock of the ocean. If you can see submarine, sorry, you can see shipwrecks, you can see corals, you can see sea life, a lot of marine life you can experience. Uh, it is like a two hour experience where you have to take a boat which goes to the middle of the ocean and then from the boat you you know you climb the volcano or you climb the uh, submarine and then the submarine goes down 
there is english translation going on so there is no or uh, you can understand what you're seeing outside and uh, you know the whole experience is very worthwhile it's not very expensive it takes about uh, the cost is around 45 dollars for the whole tour it's not a very expensive product in my opinion now lastly we look at uh, gyeonggi incheon uh, before I move specifically to the region, I want you to understand what this place is. If you can see the map, then the center white dot in this uh, map is uh, Seoul City, which we have already covered. Now, Gyeonggi Incheon is everything that surrounds the Seoul City. It is more like the NCR of Delhi, which is uh, the Noida, Ghaziabad, Faridabad, Gurgaon. So everything that is surrounding Delhi, uh, the NCI region, the same thing applies to Seoul and the Gyeonggi Incheon is everything that is surrounding the Seoul city. You don't necessarily have to uh, give your clients a night stay in these places. All main attractions in this in Gyeonggi Incheon is about an hour's drive or an hour and a half drive max to uh, anywhere in Seoul city. So, you know, a full day excursion covering the main places is good enough. So, but definitely it is, uh, you know, important to keep Gyeonggi Incheon in mind because they have one of a few of the most important attractions that are there to offer in South Korea. First one of them being Everland Theme Park. This is the largest theme park in South Korea. It is located on the southern part of, uh, southern side of the uh, Seoul city, about in 40 minutes to an hour's drive. Uh, a huge complex with you know, roller coasters, panda world, zoo, safari world, you know, different kind of experiences, more than 100 total attractions that people can try. Uh, along with it, there's a Caribbean Bay or a water park also, which has its own slides and rides and everything. In fact, one day is not enough to cover everything, but, uh, you know, uh, we still recommend, we recommend one day because in one day you can see all the main sites in this location. It is also not a very, very expensive kind of a ticket. A full day uh, ticket for uh, Everland theme park, including all the rides and attractions is around 54,000 won, which is roughly around $50, uh, which is not a very expensive price. If you compare, you know, you as a travel agent know better than me because you sell so many other theme parks all over the world. $50 is not an expensive price to pay if you want to cover everything, come from roller coasters to different kind of, you know, experiences uh, and want to spend a full day at a theme park. Uh, the Suwon Hyosung Fortress, one of the most important forts in, in South Korea is also located in this region. Uh, this is uh, where uh, you can, your guests can also see a lot of cultural programs or they can do traditional archery or different kind of team building exercises if it is a mice group. So definitely worth keeping in mind. One of the most important attractions, in fact, in the whole country, and one of the most rare attractions all over the world is the DMZ, which is the demilitarized zone between North Korea and South Korea, uh, as I or the North Korea South Korea border. As I explained in the beginning, South North Korea is pretty much a blocked country with hardly any access. Nobody can go there. But DMZ is the closest point that you can go to North Korea. You can see North Korea on the other side and, you know, see their villages, see their leaders, statues and all of that. So uh, the DMZ place has, a, you know, the, uh, the Dora Observatory from where you can see North Korea on the other side. There is a third infiltration tunnel which was dug during the Korean War and it is a tunnel that is very deep into the uh, surface, about 100 meters deep and it goes all the way to North Korea. You, your customer can take this uh, tunnel and go all the way there. Of course, when North Korea starts, you cannot go any further, it is blocked, but you can see what is on the other side and it is definitely a worthwhile attraction. There is nothing like this anywhere in the world. Uh, you know, big world leaders have visited this place. Donald Trump visited this way place in 2018. The two countries, North Korea, South Korea, when their leaders meet, they meet at the DMZ. Uh, you must have seen the visuals when they meet recently in the past few years. They stepped at each other's side. So all that happens at a, this very important geopolitical place. And definitely, you know, if you're visiting South Korea, 
then one should not miss DMZ. It is just an hour's drive from Seoul City, so not a very far-fetched distance located also. If you're a group travel, then all the places in DMZ can be covered by the group, uh, you know, bus. However, if you're an FID travel, then you can take the DMZ train. That starts it's like a hop and hop of train stops at different kind of different locations where you can see visit the place and then take the train for the next place also. So you know a very fun kind of an experience. Now somebody who is not uh, not uh, has does not have Jeju in their itinerary. In that case, this place, the Korean Folk Village, is a very important attraction to be included in the program for anybody who is staying in Seoul. Especially if it is a mice group or if it is a school group or an activity related group, special interest group, then this uh, Korean folk village can show you traditional Korean life, uh, old heritage buildings, and different kind of experiences like ferry boat riding, dying experience, wooden craft experience, pottery workshop, all at one place. And the full ticket, full admission ticket with all the experiences included is around 24,000 won, which is roughly around $20. Again, not a very expensive price to pay if you want to see so many different things and try out different kind of activities. And worth to keep in mind and worth while to keep include in the itinerary to spend half a day. So that brings me mostly to the end of the main destinations. As I said earlier, you will always have some client who wants to do something very different, very unique. For them, we have some of the secondary destinations. We will quickly look at them and see what are the unique uh, uh, aspects. Firstly is Gangwon though. It is located on the northeast part of the country. This is the region which has the, it is the most mountainous region of the, of the country. Uh, and that is why it has got, it receives the maximum amount of snow. This is where the Pyeongchang Olympics were held in 2018. Uh, and this has got a lot of ski resorts all over the play, all over the region. There are about 12 ski resorts. The closest one from Seoul being two hours drive. The furthest one is about four hours drive. You can stay here to do different kind of ski experiences. These ski resorts are open 24 hours. The best way, uh, the, you know, in Korea they have a uh, unique thing that that people enjoy ski uh, ski sport or winter sports during the night time. So the resorts stay open all the during the night time. So you can you know experience all of that. The equipment rentals, the dress rentals are available, and five to ten dollars per person. You can get all the gear like the winter clothes, the uh, you know the gear and the, all the equipment that you need to experience uh, winter sports or ski. If you need a translate, uh, if you need a, uh, if you need an in instructor who wants to who has to explain to your group or your customer how to uh, you know uh, go about doing the ski, what winter sports like skiing, that is also available. You can just ask your DMC, and they can uh, uh, you know block an instructor in advance. If you're visiting this region during the summertime, then you have sea train, rail bike, rafting, and different kind of summer kind of experiences. To fill your day as well. Chungcheong Namdo is uh, located in the middle part of the country. This is where a lot of industries are also there. Uh, this is mostly a rural area, but this also has one of the most famous festivals which happen in South Korea, which is the Buryong Mud Festival. Every year happens in around mid July. About you know millions of tourists all over the world come here to experience this product. Uh, this is basically the Tomatina festival of Korea, but instead of tomato, they use mud. This happens on the beach, or the beach side of the coastal area, and the mud is herbal mud, is like multani mitti, which is good for your skin. So you can, you know, not only really enjoy yourself, you know, have a beer, enjoy the dance parties, have the mud festival with your friends and family, but also get like a skin treatment or a herbal treatment, which is good for your body, good for your skin. Yongsang Bukdo, this is located on the eastern part, middle eastern part of the country. This is the ancient capitals uh, region of the country. This has uh, all the historical sites like Sekuram Grotto or Buddhist historical site. The Buddh Bulguksa temple, this is one of the most beautiful Buddhist temples all over the world. This is located here, a huge complex worth to see. 
uh, observatory, national museum, you know, with where all the historical, uh, you know, national monuments or national uh, art artifacts have been preserved. The palace, the ancient tombs, these are all located in this location. So this this area, Gyeongsang Bukdo, is the history of South Korea. And lastly is Jola Bukdo. This is a rural area located in the southwest part of the country. Uh, you know, but again, it has its own charm and its own value. If somebody really wants to go into the interiors, understand the basic life of South Korea, then John Johannok Village uh, or Gimje Horizon Festival. These are kind of experiences that they can do at this location also. This pretty much brings me to the end of the destinations, so to speak. Uh, I want to focus on some of the uh, important websites that we have uh, where you can get further information on all the things that I talked about. Firstly is uh, visitkorea.or.kr. This is our global website, has all the information regarding the festival, the places, the monuments, the, uh, you know, information on location, everything. Uh, we have customized that to an India version, which is visitkorea.in, which is, has more India-specific information like visa, food, uh, the itineraries and all of that. So you can refer to that. You also have a FIT website, which is called Visit Korea for Me. This website has all the different kind of attractions, things to do, activities, or unique things that a DMC might not be able to tell you on a first go. So it is worthwhile for you to visit this website to do know, get to know what are the unique uh, tours or what are the unique uh, themed tours that you can do in every city in South Korea. Medical wellness in South Korea is a big thing. And not so much in India, but South Asia and a lot of other countries, a lot of people South, visit South Korea for medical purpose, especially cosmetic surgery. 90% uh, of all the cosmetic surgery for face uh, uh, happen in South Korea. It is a very, very uh, advanced system. So if you have customers who want privacy and want to have advanced treatment in South Korea, something that you can definitely consider for them. Lastly, but uh, in my opinion, we, the most important website that we have is for the mice sector. This is koreaconvention.org. This website is important because it has all the information on all the hotels, its uh, capacity, uh, uh, what are the different kind of venue sizes that they have, how many rooms they have, how many twin rooms they have, what are the you know outdoor uh, venues that you can do a gala dinner at, what are the unique experiences that you can do for your group. All that is available in this website. So definitely a very, very important website for mice when you're making a product or making an itinerary for a customer. Now, uh, continuing in the mice aspect, uh, of, uh, you know, if you have any group which is traveling to South Korea, then uh, as a tourism board, we have a lot of support that we can provide to your group. Uh, we have an incentive support system, which is applicable for mice groups. They have a basic criteria or eligibility criteria, which is basically, your group has to be minimum 10 people and it has to be traveling in South Korea for minimum two nights. So 10 people and two nights. If you are able to complete these two criteria, then we can provide you incentive and support. Now, typically this support is applicable for a mice group only, but uh, in India, we have customized it in a way that if you have any group, be it a, you know, a GID group or be it a, you know, a special interest group, a school group, a student group, or an ad hoc group or government delegation, any group which is more than 10 people and is in South Korea for minimum two nights, we can internally show it as a mice group and provide you support and that is normally provided to only a my or typical incentive group or a corporate group only. Uh, the group, uh, the support, of course, uh, uh, increases as the group size increases. But if you can see from the map uh, or the chart, you can understand that the basic souvenir is a choice of performance and an attraction. So you can choose from an attraction or a performance or an experience like an Anta show or a Gyeongbuk Palace or a Taekwondo training, or different kind of attractions. And along with that, you can also choose a souvenir. 
uh, if your group size is higher than 100 people, then we can also do welcome uh, events or team building events. We can do a welcome event at the airport or at the gala dinner venue, or we can do a team building program where you can your group can do a certain activity. There is a different host, there are different kind of activities available. And these are all free of cost. So, you know, uh, of course, uh, more higher the group size, the more support there is. Uh, if you have more than 200 people group, then we can also look at familiarization tours where we can host you or your uh, and your one person from your client uh, if they have confirmed the destination to look at the venues, look at the attractions, look at the activities, all that we can do. Uh, and uh, we have, uh, you know, all this information uh, is available at our Korea Convention website at our India website for you to download and see which are the options available and what are the different kind of experiences or activities that you are doing. Now, if you are in touch with South Korea, our office right from the query stage, then we will definitely tell you what is the best suited activity attraction to your, uh, uh, to your particular group. Uh, and we will guide you through the whole process. But if you have already some group confirmed and you contact us post the confirmation, then if you contact us minimum uh, at least uh, 10 days before the group is traveling and you provide us the basic information of the group, then we can do some kind of, you know, we can definitely provide you some kind of support from this, uh, from the chart that I discussed. Uh, you can, uh, you know, what, what, what we normally do is that uh, when you send us the itinerary, we tell you which are the uh, which are the support which fits well in the itinerary, or we can provide you the whole list of options of all the support activities or souvenirs, or theme park or attractions that we have, and you can own or choose on your own uh, what are the attractivities or uh, or the attractions that you want to be included. Now, what happens is that uh, this support is passed on to you through the DMC. So. This is not a cash incentive, but uh, this is something that you can uh, wave off from the DMC invoice. Uh, you can choose to, you know, pass it on to your customer, or you can help use this uh, incentive to improve the bottom line of your file. Either way, it works perfectly for us. Uh, the average support in terms of price value is around twenty-five to twenty to twenty-five dollar per person for a group size around 50, 60 people. Of course, more higher the group support is increasing, but $20, $30 per person for 50, 70, 80 people is a handsome amount that you can look at, you you know, saving in your file or passing out to your customer. So definitely something worthwhile considering South Korea as a MICE product. That brings me to the end of the presentation. Uh, you can see my uh, contacts here and I will be more than happy to, uh, you know, receive email from your side or a phone call from your side or, you know, save my number, WhatsApp me. Uh, more than happy to do, uh, provide you whatever kind of information that you need. And I really hope that this presentation gives you a little bit of insights on the country and tells you about the various things or the various activities that you can go do there. With that, uh, I bring the presentation to an end. Uh, I will stop the screen sharing and uh, I will ask Nikita to guide me to the Q&A session. Hey Sandeep, thank you so much for such a detailed uh, presentation on South Korea. We've got so many questions pouring in right now. So I'll quickly begin by asking a few questions to you, and uh, right. we will also have we also uh, we also have Afreen from Korea Tourism Organization, and she'll be replying to the rest of the questions. So this is just an FYI for the audience, and uh, uh, audience, her her answers will be visible to you in the Q and A box on the left hand side. So please make a note of that. And uh, so let's get started, Sandeep. Uh, the first question for you is: How many nights do you recommend for families? So, uh, see, the first of all, South Korea is a long haul destination. You are looking at a seven hour flight if it's a direct one. And if it's a via flight, then a, a more than 10 hours with the stop in between. So, uh, you know, when you're, uh, I definitely recommend a minimum of four nights stay, though I, I would say that four nights is not enough to understand or get to know the country. 
but if you're looking at an economical package and a, looking at a basic package introduction package to south korea the minimum four stay four night stay is very important for a family product or an itinerary which can be sold itself uh, you can combine it with something else like busan or jeju make it a five to six night product uh, ideal itinerary should be around five to six nights for uh, seoul uh, for seoul in combination with busan or in combination with jeju wow thank you so much for that basically what happens is i mean my experience has always been that nowadays when families go out traveling they want to see the more they want to make the most of it so i'm sure like five nights six nights would not hurt any family and the travel agents can recommend that that number of nights good for all of us that way yeah so great the next question is can we directly yep. go to uh, jeju island or should we go to seoul and then go to jeju island so actually both options are available uh, uh firstly let's uh, if you want to see all of korea which includes seoul and jeju island both then going to seoul first uh, will be a better option for you in terms of connectivity and then you can take a domestic flight to jeju island uh bear in mind in that case you definitely need the visa for south korea if you want to go to jeju island first and then go to to the mainland of korea in that case also you definitely need to apply for south korea visa in advance if you want to go to only jeju island then you can fly via uh, hong kong uh, cathay pacific uh, airline connection and you can complete jeju island about 3 to 4 nights and then come back so only jeju island you can do on its own uh, but if you can combine jeju with seoul or any other port then arriving in seoul uh, offers a better connectivity right great good to know information thank you so much uh, the next question is what are the activities for kids and which are the kid friendly cities in korea so again uh, uh, seoul and its vicinity which is gyeonggi incheon area is the most kid friendly place in south korea uh, especially because it has so much for them to not only experience enjoy but also to learn there are the uh, the everland theme park the seoul towers where they can uh, enjoy the palaces where they can enjoy uh, understand the culture there is the k style hub that i mentioned in the presentation that is a whole infrastructure four story building where they can understand the culture try korean food wear korean costume and you know get to know korean celebrities and all of that all at one location Uh, there are different museums or experience centers in the city by Samsung and LG Hyundai where they can uh, get to know how a car is manufactured or how a mobile is made what is the future technology what is the driverless technology in the future all of them uh, the children can get to know and understand in Seoul and vicinity wow that's interesting uh the next question is uh it is actually into two parts so i'll break it up you've given partly an answer for the first part so the question mm-hmm. is with what cities can we club jeju island and is indian food available in jeju island okay first of all jeju being an island uh, it can be tra- traveled independently and it can be traveled uh, it can be connected with any of the city in south korea so there are plenty of flight connections all over the uh, city, uh, country for you. ideally from an indian traveler point of view seoul and busan both are, are the top two cities where indian visit and both have direct flight connections to jeju island and they have more than 50 flights per day per sector so timing is not an issue the flight fare is not an issue you, uh, the, you know, the lcc is the low cost carrier cost around 30 40 dollars the full service will cost around 50 60 dollars so it's not a very expensive ticket also so Uh, Seoul and Jeju, uh, Seoul and Busan, both are very well connected and best connections to connect to Jeju Island from Indian perspective. Indian food is available in Jeju. Currently, there are five restaurants. Uh, uh, actually, there are more than five restaurants. Five of them have been listed by us, uh, which uh, with uh, average seating capacity around 50 people. So there are some restaurants which are run by Korean. There are some restaurants which are run by Indian people. uh the food is great the food is awesome taste just like an indian food in uh, india uh so food is not a problem jain food is not a problem vegetarian food is not a problem in jeju island lovely lovely 
the last question, Sandeep. We'll take up the last one, which is, what are the student travel opportunities in South Korea? Okay, uh, I am glad that you uh, people are asking this question because student travel is one of the big things in South Korea now, and this is something that we are also aggressively putting in India. South Korea is a perfect country when it comes to uh, student tours. You know, student tours, uh, people need value schools and their principals and the uh, parents who are sponsoring the, uh, the travel of their children. They need value and learning experiences for their, uh, for their children. And what better country to visit uh, other than a country which is the birthplace of household brands in India like Hyundai, uh, Samsung, LG, and now Kia Motors. Now, we are all familiar with these brands. We are living these brands daily on a, on a daily basis in our, uh, and in our lives. And when the children go to South Korea, they can visit these fact their factories and see how these processes and how the uh, how the equipment that they use are made. Learn about the uh, you know industrial process and how such a small country came up with such huge brands and get uh, aspiration to do something like that in the future. Not only that, uh, South Korea is great for you know uh, aerospace technology. It is great for future technology like 5G. Uh, South Korea is one of the only countries in the world where 5G is already in full implementation. So they can see future technology there. They can also learn about uh, Korean culture. They can, you know, Taekwondo is a uh, uh, martial art that is originated from South Korea. They can do a half day session where they can learn Taekwondo and they can get a certificate after that. So all this can be combined and it, 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 com it then this you know, learning experiences uh, can be added with school visits. Now that is something also with we as a tourism board can help you and we all we, we regularly help a lot of uh, school groups going to Korea. We arrange the school visit for them. So they can have a cultural interaction or a, uh, or kind of a you know one-on-one -on -one interaction with the schools there. The Indian schools perform some kind of uh, stuff for them or the Korean schools perform some kind of an activity for the Indian schools. And they, know, they make, you know, a global friends. So these kind of stuff, and they get certificates from the schools that they have won. They can even attend one of the classes or the, uh, or the sessions so they understand how, what is the teaching process that they have in South Korea. All of them combined with great food, 100% safety. It is a country with very good track record of safety, petty crimes like thieving, uh, pickpocketing. They don't exist in the country. Uh, you know, places are safe to travel even at midnight or 3 a.m. English is widely spoken. So there is no reason for somebody to, or, or, or a student travel to not consider South Korea as a place to take their students to. Wow. So many options for students. Wow, this is so interesting. Thank you, Sandeep, for highlighting this to us. And thank you so much. Uh, we will end up the, we'll end the Q&A round here. And uh, Afrim will continue replying to the rest of the questions in the Q&A box. Uh, thank you, Afrim, for doing that. Uh, audience, I hope the training was informative for you. And, we've, and it'll help you sell South Korea to your clients once travel opens up, of course. Uh, our next webinar is on 24th April. We will now request you to complete the survey and attempt the quiz, as we would love to test your knowledge. The screen will be open for the next 15 minutes. Once the quiz is over, you can then print the certificate, which appears as a yellow icon on the bottom of your screen. Please remember that certificate will only be available to those who have passed the quiz. Thank you so much for attending today's training on South Korea. We will see you again on 24th of April. Take care. This is Nikita Raptani signing off. Thank you.